Now we talk about faith. That's the foundation of everything we do as a Christian. Without faith, we cannot please God. Without faith, I would not be talking to you today about how to improve your children's lives and shape them for the future to the glory of God. So to start off, here's a verse for you from Ezekiel 44:23. I personalized it, and it says, And we shall teach your people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Amen. Help us, Jesus. Here's another. This should be one of the bases of your life. The sky and earth, the universe, the world, will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. Luke 21, 33, Amplified. As my faithful and faith-filled Pastor Tracy Harris is so fond of saying, If you can't believe God for a million dollars, believe for $100,000 from 10 people. Or, he says, if you can't believe for that, start believing for socks. Just start believing. God rewards faith. And faith, as Pastor also says, is the currency of heaven. So faith is the first focus first. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. We must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of us who diligently seek him. That's from Hebrews 11.6. And actually, we all have more faith than we consciously think about most of the time. We have faith the car will start. We have faith the light will come on when we flip the switch. And certainly we have faith that the bills and the taxes will arrive. We have faith that the chair we're sitting in will hold us up and that the sun will appear in the morning. So we have faith. The point is, do we have faith in God? When it comes to faith in God, why do we waver? We can't see electricity, but we often seem to believe in it more than him who created it. Yet even spiritual giants such as pastors Tracy and Lori strive to have more faith. And it's a continual thing. Hallelujah. But God is the author and finisher of our faith, and he helps us. When I was first learning about the dynamics of being a spirit-filled Christian and having faith that moved mountains, I heard an associate pastor at Guts Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, say to the crowd, We tell the enemy, no, I'm not having that curse. I'm having this blessing of God. I'm not having what you send, devil. I'm having what God sends. It is my right as a blood-bought child of God, and that's what I want, and that's what I have. So talk like that stuck in my mind. I wanted to have that kind of faith. I wanted to be that confident, knowing that I could believe and proclaim and have that which was purchased for me on the cross. For Jesus had shed his blood. Jesus, the sovereign king, had shed his blood and became my sin, adopted me as his child, and provided for me all the fullness of the covenant like we're learning in our church right now. But how do we get more faith, and how do we impart it to our children? Faith equal hearing plus action. Last May, I was in Mesquite, Texas at a wonderful conference for women, and I was sitting there hearing a wonderful sermon by Terry Copeland Pearson's on how to pray for wisdom. And I said, Lord, I need more faith. Please give me more faith. Not only did I want wisdom, but I wanted faith. And of course, my father said in my heart, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But of course, how is anyone taught but that they hear, both with their physical ears and in their spirits, minds, and emotional experiences? And my pastor says that true hearing comes the moment we believe or have faith that what we hear is true and to decide to act on that truth. So faith is not just hearing and believing. Faith is acting on what we believe. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, but he didn't just believe what God told him. He got up, moved his whole family, all his flocks and herds, and started heading in a direction where he had no idea where he was going to end up. That was faith in action. Noah listened to the Lord and started building an ark. And I think he had 120 years to preach and warn people, none of them which had faith, but Noah and his family had faith. They got in the ark. God carried them above the earth and the flood that wiped out every other living thing besides what was in the ark. They heard, they believed, and they took action. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we hear and believe and take action, it doesn't matter how small the beginning seems. God will bless it. He blesses faith. He cannot not bless faith. So, Lord, help us to be people of faith more than ever before today. Another thing God showed me is this. 
Hearing doesn't just mean going to church to listen to the preacher or even listening to the word at home on a CD. Hearing is experienced when we see God in prayer, 101, when we're worshiping either corporately or by ourselves with the Lord. It doesn't matter if we're singing along with a Christian radio station or just singing in the Holy Spirit or making up a song off the top of our head that may sound silly as it come out of, comes out of our mouths, but if it's offered in sincerity, the Lord will honor that. He loves our attention. He died to get and keep our attention. He loves the relationship he has with us. He loves us. And when you love somebody, you want to spend time with him. Part of our faith is knowing that God exists and that he rewards us and that every time we seek him, it is worth it and he's going to bless us. The biggest blessing is, in fact, just being in the presence of the one that loves us so much he died for us. Hallelujah. Also, even when we read the word silently, our brains and our spirits hear the word. Whether you're reading the word or just a regular book, you are hearing those words in your brain as you go along. But especially when you read the word, it builds your faith. The same thing happens to our children. When we give our children Bible verses to read, and especially if we have them read them to us, which is something my little girl loves to do, they have the triple blessing of hearing them three ways. And when our little darlings see us applying the word to our lives, in other words, living the word, they hear yet again. So our actions flow out of what we believe. Faith equals hearing plus action. Now, how to hear better. Another important point is that hearing God's voice comes more frequently and easily to those who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what I speak about at the end of First Things First. I cannot explain it, but the miracle of empowerment from God allows believers who continue to seek him the ability to hear and understand his voice in much greater ways. All I can say is try it for yourself. If you don't understand it, ask God. He knows everything. He is the answer. He will lead you. He may do it directly with you one-on-one or through the reading of his word or during worship, or he may send people into your life to help you and teach you. Ask him to show you, and he will. He has a million ways to get to you what you need. Hallelujah. He is so good. Pastor says, God is always talking to us, but we're usually too busy to listen. And I know, unfortunately, that's been true in my life. But God is helping me to do better listening to him more. And it's a constant discipline because the world is constantly coming at us with all this information most of which we don't need but the spirit in us keeps drawing us to spend time with God and that is where we are the happiest and the most fulfilled for that is what we're created for to be in the presence of God hallelujah so let's make the decision to take more time to be alone with God after all why are we here we're not here just to have a good time we're here to bring God glory and pleasure Now, feelings versus faith. One thing we must remember is that feelings and faith don't always match. In fact, there's days that they seem totally opposite of one another. Feelings can't be trusted. And according to pastors Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, we cannot get to know Jesus just through feelings. Those can be very deceptive. We must get to know him through his word first. And he may give us, and he often, especially to spirit-filled people, gives us revelation outside of our reading from the word but if that revelation does not match up with the word of god it is not from god that is the absolute the word of god must be the standard and is the only standard for whatever else we experience think or feel or dream if these other things do not match up with the word they are not from god however good or godly they seem to be because remember the enemy disguises himself as an angel of light however We can always trust our faith in God's word. It is infallible. It is matchless. It is eternal. And Jesus is the word made flesh. Also, God never changes. He doesn't change his mind. Praise God. Where would we be if he changed? We change all the time. God is the rock that never changes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory to his name. And often we may read the word and things will not be clear to us. Or we may pray or worship and things may not be clear to us. Sometimes a period of fasting is required to get an answer. Sometimes there's things, as in when Nehemiah 
was rebuilding the wall. And the people came to him and said, when the wall, I think, was about half up, they said, there's so much rubble we cannot finish rebuilding the wall. They had to clear the rubble out of the way. Sometimes you will not get the answer or the direction you need from God until you ask him to show you the rubble that needs to be out of the way. That rubble, of course, would be some kind of sin. And it's amazing to me, the human heart truly is wicked and desperately deceitful. Or maybe I have that backwards, but it cannot be trusted. The word of God can be trusted. When you have the spirit of the living Christ inside you, there will be a witness. Pastor Tracy calls it the knower. You'll know when your heart is thinking the right way. You'll truly know when your heart is matching up with the word of God. If you don't have complete peace about something, don't do it. Don't say it. Don't go there. And keep seeking God until you get the green light of peace, total peace. Joy will usually almost always accompany that peace as well. You'll have a freedom in your spirit. So remember, when you can't trust anyone or anyone else, even your own heart, you can always trust the word of God. That is where our faith begins and ends. So Lord, expand our faith in your word today. Expand our faith in your spirit, witnessing and matching the word of God. And let us end with this verse. Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, help us to hear and obey you today.